Man United have had their worst ever start to a Premier League season and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is continuing to come under serious pressure around his job. But in this video, I want to explain exactly why I think Solskjaer still deserves and needs your support as United manager. Now, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you go below, hit that subscribe button and get involved in the community. But let me explain. One of the major frustrations that a lot of United fans have about Solskjaer is trying to understand exactly the identity that he's trying to build on the pitch with United. And I think a lot of those frustrations have been completely and utterly fair. I mean, come on for crying out loud. We're 14th in the league. But I actually think the identity of what Solskjaer wants his United team to do is quite clear. Solskjaer wants a team who can press with intensity out of possession, win the ball, early recover in the opposition's half when we're attacking hit directly with pace and for a team to be comfortable in defence in possession so that we can play out from the back. All of those are the hallmarks I think are quite obvious that Solskjaer wants in his team. It's just that we haven't seen enough of it so far this season. Too often United have been absolutely horrendous to watch, more League 2 than Premier League standard and Solskjaer is partly certainly responsible for that. He's the manager it does fall at his feet. But these players just aren't good enough to do that style that Solskjaer wants for the full 90 minutes. All you've got to do is take a quick look at the player positions, for example, against Liverpool. Look at that first 45 minutes. Young and Wan-Bissaka playing so high up the pitch. Maguire, Lindelof and Rojo playing so far away from the edge of our own box because we played aggressively. It was a 3-5-2 that tried to expose Liverpool's weaknesses, which I'll speak about in detail. But it was an aggressive formation from Solskjaer, which worked. And United was so good, but the second half, we sat so deep. Now, there's different ways you could interpret this. But for me, I think it was Solskjaer accepting that his players aren't capable of doing that, what we did in that first 45 minutes for the whole game. Because there's no way he's going to try and shut out Liverpool in the second half. Liverpool, who have won 17 consecutive Premier League games. A Liverpool team who, the last time they didn't score in a Premier League game, was back in March against Everton. To try and shut that team out would have been foolish. And for me, it was an acceptance from Solskjaer that, look, what we did in that first half, this team's not ready to do that for the full 90 minutes yet. That's why he switched up the style for United in the second half and put more trust in the defence and the midfield to shut Liverpool out than he did for the attackers to try and make it 2-0. And I think that's, that's the, the catch-22 that United have at the moment. We have a defence and a midfield which isn't good enough to shut teams out for a 1-0. Not often enough. We've done it against Leicester, but rarely have United done that in some time. And we also don't have an attack which is capable of getting that second goal to make it 2-0. Even against Liverpool, Dan James, two or three opportunities he had to put Rashford through and he didn't take him. We had chances as well, we didn't take them. Andreas Pereira, so many opportunities but didn't create chances, poor decisions. United, and that's the, and that's the catch-22 I think that Solskjaer has with this identity he's trying to build. The defence isn't good enough to hold out a 1-0 lead, the attack isn't good enough to make it 2-0. But you can see, I think, what he's trying to do. And that 45 minutes against Liverpool, for me, has to be a blueprint of what we see going forward. The 4-2-3-1 does not work. And Solskjaer could have gone into this Liverpool game and used exactly that, which is what everybody expected him to do. But he didn't. He switched up the formation and it worked. And we nearly got the win out of it. And that was a game I went into, my prediction was 3-1 Liverpool. I thought we were going to get humiliated. And it didn't happen. And that was down to Solskjaer. And I really hope that that 45 minutes against Liverpool wasn't simply a tactical decision by Solskjaer to use solely against Liverpool. For me, it has to be a blueprint of what we see going forward. Because that first 45 minutes was so much better than what we've seen in the last few months. That it has to be what we want to see going forward as United fans. And I think across this season, our defence will continue to improve as the partnerships start to build and in the next coming transfer windows when new players are brought in and we've actually got a midfield that can complement a defence, that defence will improve. Our attack will improve. I think the style is there. 
We saw the start against Liverpool. That's why it was such a great 45 minutes to watch. But the quality isn't there to do it for the full 90 minutes. And we're going to see against Norwich this weekend as to whether that was just a flash in the pan against Liverpool or whether it will be something that United build towards going forward. And I think we will. Now, another criticism of Solskjaer has been that some feel he isn't tactically capable of competing against the elite managers, both in the Premier League and in Europe. But for me, there are two key examples here which show me that Solskjaer can do it on the biggest stage. And this game against Liverpool was certainly one of them. And Michael Cox over at The Athletic wrote a brilliant column which explained exactly how and why it was such an impressive tactical setup by Solskjaer that outsmarted Klopp. Using wing backs in an aggressive style with three centre backs exposed huge spaces between Liverpool's wide forward and the full back in the whole of the first half. And as Cox explains, Young and Wan Bissaka were operating more as wingers rather than full backs. And they were finding that space between Origi and Robertson that other teams just haven't been able to find this season. And Liverpool really had no response in that first half. And Jurgen Klopp, after the game, for me, showed he was rattled by it. Trying to say that United came out with an extremely defensive setup, And it couldn't have been further from the truth. In the first half, look at the average positions there of Wan-Bissaka and Young. They were in Liverpool's half. Look at the average positions of Maguire, of Rojo and Lindelof. They were so far away from the edge of our own box. Just that Liverpool couldn't do anything because we were controlling the game. And this is the Liverpool team that have won 17 consecutive Premier League games. A game in which United were expected to get humiliated. And Solskjaer surprised Klopp and surprised Liverpool by switching a formation, playing with a really high level of risk, basically leaving three on three against Liverpool's front three men. But it worked. Of course, Liverpool, if they were maybe slightly better in form in terms of how they played in that first 45 minutes, would have taken their chances. But they didn't. And United didn't give them that many chances because it was a great tactical decision by Solskjaer to change it. And it worked. And as Michael Cox explains in that article, it was Solskjaer's tactical decisions that made the difference in that game. And if we're going to slam Solskjaer for all the bad tactical decisions he's made, You've got to praise it when he makes a good one, especially like this against Liverpool. Now, for more tactical insight articles like this from Michael Cox, make sure you check out The Athletic. And this week, they're hosting an exclusive sale with United People's TV. You can get 60% off. 60% off an annual subscription. That works out at less than two quid a month for ad-free, really insightful content from the likes of Michael Cox Andy Mitten, who we interviewed last week, David Ornstein, the transfer guru, master, whatever you want to call him. Tons of great world-class articles and world-class writers on The Athletic. So follow the link in the description. 60% off for this week only. It's a sale. It's really genuinely worth it. Two quid, that's less than a pre-match pint for a month's worth of content. Make sure you follow the link in the description. Now, the other example where I think Solskjaer really showed his tactical ability was Spurs away last season. United had been on a winning streak. We're going up against Pochettino. Solskjaer at this point was only the caretaker manager and Poch was so heavily linked with the job, United were expected to get steamrolled. But Solskjaer set United up with split strikers. He hadn't done that in a game before. It's clear United had worked on Sonic in the training ground that week and implemented it perfectly on the pitch and Rashford's clinical finish made all the difference in a wonderful 1-0 win. So there's two examples there, one home, one away, against the two top managers in the Premier League, alongside Guardiola, Pochettino, Klopp and Guardiola considered the three best managers in the Premier League and Solskjaer on two occasions has shown that he can tactically go up against them, surprise them and force these managers into changing their game plans. For me, that's evidence enough that Solskjaer does have the coaching ability to compete at the highest level. Now, of course, we haven't seen this often enough. We're 14th, of course we haven't. But there's evidence there that if we do have patience and we do have time with Solskjaer, 
we'll see that more often when the quality of the players matches what United need. Because I think if we had the quality, we would have played like we did in the first 45 minutes against Liverpool for the full 90. And we might have won that game. Now, of course, we haven't really seen this on a week-to-week -week basis. That's been the issue. That's why we're lying in 14th place. And Norwich away, for me, is a perfect chance to see that this change is going to become more of a permanent thing rather than a one-off game. But Solskjaer has to evolve tactically if he's to make it as a United manager. We saw that against Liverpool. We've seen it against Spurs last season. We need to see it against Norwich. And from now on, the 4 2 3 one's not working. Maybe Solskjaer has realised that and the game against Liverpool was the start of something different. You might fairly ask here whether I'm just seeing the positive side of things when I could be looking at a negative one. Absolutely. We're 14th in the league. I could be as negative as I want here, but I've seen United under Moyes. I've seen United under Van Howe and I've seen United under Mourinho. I've watched my club fall apart at the seams ever since Fergie left. And I've seen the bare bones of what I want to see at United under Solskjaer. I agree with all three of the signings that we've made this summer. I think they're all going to become very good United players. And Dan James and Wan-Bissaka, maybe Harry Maguire as well, already have. I agree with every single player who left the club this summer. I wouldn't want any of them playing for United anymore. Sure, we might have more goals with Lukaku and Sanchez. But I don't want anybody at the club that doesn't want to be here. 90% of the decisions that Solskjaer has made off the pitch, I agree with. It's the fact that the football hasn't matched that has been the issue. But against Liverpool, that was a game where it could have all gone wrong for Solskjaer. It could have been the end of him, I think. We lost that game 3 or 4 nil. Would have been extremely hard to defend anything about Solskjaer. But there was a reaction, there was a response. The players played a new style that we hadn't seen too often this season. Liverpool had no answer in that first half. And as I said, I think if the quality was there, we would have won over the 90 minute period, but we had to switch tactically because the players aren't capable of doing that for 90 minutes yet. And while comparisons between Solskjaer and Klopp in terms of their early periods, both at Liverpool and United, aren't a, f a full idea of what's going on. It, it goes to show that a manager can struggle to implement what he's trying to do at the start. And Klopp has been given the time and it's working for him. Now, Klopp had the CV to back up why he should be given patience and time. And I'm not saying that Solskjaer has anything anywhere near what Klopp had, because he doesn't. But I've seen the bare bones of it. And I've had too much change, I think, for my liking at United as a fan to think that sacking Solskjaer is going to solve any problems. Not with the board that we've got. The structure still stinks. Now, it might have improved, which is what Ed Woodward's propaganda is telling us that it has. But sacking Solskjaer, I don't think that's going to help United in any way, shape or form right now. Yes, we're six points off the relegation zone, but we're seven points off the top four. In a few months' time, we might look back at the start of this season as nothing more than a bad dream if United can, from now on, try and get that momentum changed and shifted and use that Liverpool game as a platform, because it can be that. We were seven minutes away from beating Liverpool, from ending their winning run, which we did, but ending it by beating them. And that was down to Solskjaer's style that he implemented in that game. He took an aggressive risk, like he did away at Spurs last year. And I've seen patches of what I want this United team to be. It just hasn't had the quality to match it yet. And that's why I feel Solskjaer still deserves our support, your support, and he does need time. Because I just don't think that chopping and changing and getting rid of him is gonna help United in any way, shape or form. And you might consider me deluded for saying that because we are so close to the relegation zone. But as I said, we're equally as far away from the top four. And it has been a terrible start to the season. But I want Solskjaer to stay as United manager at the moment and keep working on what is the project that he is working on. And that's United right now. We're nothing more than a project. 
We're a fallen giant. We aren't going to be winning the Premier League anytime soon. Do I think we'll win the Premier League under Solskjaer? Probably not. But I 100% back Solskjaer to leave this club in a much better condition than what he found it. And that whoever follows him in next is going to play the same style that Solskjaer is trying to implement into this team. So that the transition will be more fluid rather than jarred and jagged like it was from Van Gaal to Mourinho. From Moyes to Van Gaal. From Mourinho to Solskjaer. He's going to help that process change. And United fans, it's not going to be a great season. It hasn't been a great season. But support Solskjaer. Stay behind him. I think he's the man to help shape our club and mould it in towards what it needs to be. It won't be the finished product by the time he leaves. But he's going to leave it in such a healthier state. Now, you may disagree and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of you that do. But this is just my own opinion. I don't think that Solskjaer out is going to help United at all. I think he's the right man for the job at the moment. And that game against Liverpool showed me exactly why. We can improve. We can continue to improve. And the more new signings that come in that fit this style, maybe Madison, maybe Sancho, probably not. But it's going to keep getting better. It's going to be baby steps. But who better to have baby steps than the baby face assassin? I walked straight into that cliche. Didn't actually write that one down. Let me know what you think about Solskjaer. For me, supporting him is the right thing to do. And I've seen evidence there against Liverpool that maybe things could start turning around this season. Let's see what happens against Norwich. If you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe and get involved. Till next time though, take it easy.